There's some sort of activation, some sort of realization, understanding the, the, the reality that you have around you, understanding the dynamic that you have with certain people around you. And it feels like this may have been something that you were persevering towards, something that you were fighting towards, fighting for. But it seems like you're no longer fighting for this any longer. It feel, it even feels like you're not even really willing to communicate about it any longer with this Eight of Wands in reverse. Someone is really standing on their own here. Nine of Pentacles and the Emperor. Someone is really standing on their own, making their own decision, and moving forward with their own sense of conviction. Hello everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading, yes, for your day or like whenever, yeah. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, it, this is a timeless reading, yeah, so um, this may resonate a little bit right now. It may not resonate now, it may resonate later, it may resonate even more later on down the road. Just take it as it resonates, take it as it comes. Um, but also keep in mind, this is a general reading. This is a collective reading. Yes? Yay. Okay. So, um, oh, happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Uh, Stella bought, uh, got me a, um, a hump day shirt, but I wore it for happy hour last night because I was just so excited for it. So I'll have to wear it next Wednesday, uh, again, next Wednesday. But yeah, um, if you want to see the shirt, check out happy hour. Also, I would check out that happy hour video from yesterday because there are a number of collective messages in there that may really resonate with some of you. So go ahead and check that out. I did not do an Instagram live reading before the session yesterday because I wanted to focus a lot of my attention on um, collective energies here on YouTube instead of trying to split it this time. But anyway, yeah, check that out if you would, if you feel so inclined. Yes. So... Orion, our young prince, has developed a really beautiful habit of sounding the alarm at around, oh, 3.30, 4 in the morning, declaring that he and his sister must be let outside. And let me tell you, man, these cats are incredibly vocal. Like, you've heard both of them before, but Orion is fucking loud, okay? And he's relentless. Like, he will not stop. There, I have tried. I have tried my hardest to just ignore it and be like, no, I'm not giving in. You don't need to go outside right now. Especially when his sister will want to come right back in maybe an hour later. So, like... In the very beginning, they would do this, and then I would let them out, and I'd fall back to sleep. And just as I was falling back to sleep, here comes Jinx trying to come back in. So, needless to say, that has completely screwed screwed up my sleep <laughs> schedule, I guess you could call it. Um, so, like, I, I eventually gave in and let them out, which was fine, but then I went back to sleep, and then next thing I know, it's 7 in the morning. Not to say that that's all that late, but, like, I like to get up a little earlier, but, like, whatever. So, morning coffee is late today, and you can blame Orion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, is it really late, though? Um, yeah, it, divine timing is a thing. All right, guys. Let's get into today's reading and see what messages we have for the collective today. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, um, today I'm seeing purple and green. I'm through that, I'm hearing heart chakra awareness and heart chakra wisdom. I'm going to give this five chakras. 
Oh, and sorry, we're using the Vice Versa deck today and um, the Los Carabello deck for clarity and then we'll cross the Oracle Bridge when we get there, blah, blah, blah. Right, okay, five shuffles, one. But purple and green seems to be the theme today. This is two, Heart Chakra Awareness. Heart Chakra Clarity. I know I've been feeling that lately. Um, ever since, this is four, ever since I got back from New York, um, you know, I've been a much clearer, much happier, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and I think it was Carolyn that said it last yesterday in the comments section. Wait, that was three. This is four. Sorry. Um, that I just needed some time, you know, I needed a reset with like my friends and family, which was absolutely true. Um, and this is five, but so for me, I am, I am feeling that clarity. I'm feeling that wisdom. I'm feeling that connection. But for you guys, it's mostly, that's what this kind of feels like. There's a, there's an awareness going on of what is, what I, what I just heard is there's a, an awareness of what is residing within your heart chakra right now. Heart chakra clarity is the, is the point. Whether that is leaving you feeling in a good place or in a not so good place, it doesn't matter. Even if you're, in your, even if you're in the not so good place, the awareness and the wisdom that is coming through for you right now in terms of what is within your heart and what needs to be healed within your heart, what are the discrepancies, what has been holding you back, what have you been harboring is what I'm hearing. Um, that awareness is actually going to lead you to greater clarity and greater happiness moving forward once you're able to really clear that away or at least start working on that. Um, it's not even like you're gonna, you're not gonna feel relief until it's completely clear. It's more like as soon as you start really doing that work, I feel a sense of clarity that's going to come in for you. It's like it's like the the weight is going to be lifted off the off of your shoulders, even if it's not like you don't have any sort of immediate um, uh, resolution or anything. Just it just feels like just the the fact that you're dealing with this is going to be relieving itself. Okay, all right, that's cool. So, what uh, what's going on? What do we have for the collective today? Oh, that's good. That's good too. That's very good. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. First of all, what I want to say is uh, um, overall energy. You have the nine of pentacles. Wow. On the other side, you have the emperor and. We have all backs, all backs are turned right now, okay? Except for one card. Um, but also what I wanna say is you really might want to check out the happy, hours, uh, the happy hour video from yesterday. Um, the screenshot or the, the, the image uh, of that is the New York City skyline. So look out for that, okay? If, they're, if you're having trouble finding it, but um, I really, I highly recommend that you check out that, that video, at least the very beginning, because there was a, an opening collective message that seems to be connected to whatever we're talking about here. And that's mainly because we do have the Knight of Wands coming out, okay? And the Knight of Wands, the back is turned, okay? Back is turned on the Empress, I'm sorry, on the Queen of the, wow, on the um, Nine of Pentacles. Back is also turned on the Emperor. We also have... With the knight, the knight of Wands, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse, the Five of Swords in reverse, and the Eight of Wands in reverse. But to me, this is all a good thing. Because to me, what this is saying here is there's some sort of activation, some sort of realization. Uh, this activation could just be in the form of understanding the, the, the reality that you have around you, understanding the dynamic that you have with certain people around you, or at least the dynamic of a certain situation that you find yourself, a life circumstance that you find yourself in. Um, and it feels like this may have been something that you were persevering towards, something that you were fighting towards, fighting for. And if it was a goal, maybe it was a goal that you were fighting towards or something like that. Um, but it seems like you're no longer fighting for this any longer. It, feel, it even feels like you're not even really willing to communicate about it any longer with this Eight of Wands in reverse. Someone is really standing on their own here, Nine of Pentacles and the Emperor. Someone is really standing on their own, making their own decision and moving forward with their own sense of conviction. And I feel like with this Knight of Wands here, with all this lightning going on, I feel like this is um, a pretty serious energy for you. 
Uh, there is a lot of, I want to say conviction here for you. And this might be pretty intense, and it feels like it would be pretty intense because of the fact that you may have been holding back from this for a long time. You may have been fighting for something or towards something that wasn't really quite working for you. And in the end, it just became a lose-lose situation, five of swords. But all of this is in reverse here. This, this perseverance, this lose-lose situation, this, 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 this energy of trying to, for really, with all this lightning, okay, it feels like something was trying to be forced, forced into, into place, forced into activation, forced to work somehow. But you're not doing that any longer. You're not doing that any longer, or at least someone isn't doing that any longer. Wow, yeah, okay, why? And, and I, was gonna, I was just gonna ask, why is that happening? Well, I picked up the deck and it's the Seven of Pentacles here. It's gotten to the point where what I heard, what I just heard is dire straits. So what it feels like here is this situation has gotten so dire. And look at the look at the expression on this person's face if it will if it will focus. I don't think it's gonna focus, but you see how the expression on this person's face? It's not good. This person is distraught, is stressed out. It's like, what the hell is going on here? This is not what I wanted. Why is this happening? What can I do? And really the only thing that's left to do is to clear this away and make space for some for something new i kind of want to say start fresh so you, it feels like you re you've gotten recently gotten to the point where you're really understanding that whatever it is you've been fighting for whatever it is you've been working towards that has been a struggle that has turned out to be a lose-lose situation you finally understand that you really just need to let this go completely is what i just heard okay and stand on your own and actually i'm gonna be honest with you there is a level of serious frustration with all of these backs that have been, that are turned here. And actually the frustration that I'm getting is specifically coming from the nine, nine of pentacles. It's like, you're finally choosing to stand on your own here and not take someone else's advice or not take someone else's answer as verbatim. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Hold on a second. It really feels like you're taking, you're taking a stance. You're standing on your own two feet right now, okay? Like really standing on your own, stepping up to the plate and really taking your power back or... I just heard taking advantage of the situation at hand. But, okay, what they're saying is you're taking advantage of the situation in terms of you're taking, you're standing strong, you're standing on your own. You're taking this opportunity to assert yourself, to, stay, to stand up and be an independent thinker. Because you realize that it's finally time to do that. All right, excellent. I'm gonna get one more pull from this deck. What else do you wanna say here, please, Spirit, in terms of the situation? for the collective. Well, the Two of Cups wanted to just come out. All right. So we could be talking about, oh shoot, it's so funny. It is so funny because the Empress has just come out and I was, and I almost said that. Okay, hold on, we gotta pause again. Okay, so we do have the Empress that's come out here, and we also have that with the Two of Cups. Now, this could be an Emperor-Empress dynamic. So we could be dealing with uh, a masculine individual, a feminine individual, whether that's man or a woman, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about gender, we're talking about energy. We also could be dealing with something that could be a bit of like a twin flame situation for you, if that's what resonates for you. Um, however, I do feel like the Empress and the Emperor are being represented in one person, regardless as to whether or not, you know, you are, you do have that, you know, the, that mirroring dynamic with an external individual. Um, but what we have here is the Empress with the Two of Cups. Now, the Two of Cups is the bright side of the card, daylight, right? Where something is coming into view. However, what I feel like here is this, this is representing you recognizing or realizing what this situation really is 
or the, the true dynamics of the situation. It, feel, it feels like there's no more illusion here. There's no more wool being pulled over your eyes. You're not diluting yourself any longer. You're not deceiving yourself any longer about what this relationship is. What this relationship truly is, or to be quite honest, what this has become. But uh, but honestly, I really want to say, and I just heard it again, you're taking your power back. Sorry, guys. You're taking your power back. And I, I feel like you're stepping into your true empress mode, okay? And But I also feel like that's where the emperor is coming into play. Because the emperor is representing a sense of protection, a form of protection, Whereas the Empress energy here is you settling into a feeling of knowing that you're good, knowing that the universe has you, knowing that you're abundant, that, you know, this isn't the end all be all. There are more, there are plenty of fish in the sea. If this is a, if this does feel like a relationship. You see, what do you want, Orion? He literally, he literally just came to the door, stuck his head in, meowed and walked away. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, my allergies are exploding. Okay, so <clears throat> the theme for this reading is empowerment. Um, and that's where we get back to the colors that I was seeing for the collective in the beginning of the reading, purple and green. There is a higher awareness of... the Honestly, the best way that this is coming through right now is just to say there is an, a higher awareness... Or, or an awareness of what's within your heart chakra. Discrepancies within your heart chakra. What has been holding you back? What has been keeping you in cycles of toxicity? And now that you're aware of that, you're no longer fighting for that any longer. And now you have the clarity to understand what it is you truly want or need out of, really, out of a relationship. But also expressly what I'm getting from the Empress here is feeling abundant enough to know that you deserve it and to get it. Okay. I just heard there some somebody here somebody here may have had a serious wake up call when it comes to love and relationships. Um let's start clarifying. Yeah. Five shuffles. One. Two. Four. Oops. Four. And five. I want to start with the Empress and the Two of Cups here. Yes. <laughs> please, please excuse the manicure. I definitely need to redo that today. I've been kind of lazy with it. Whatever. Empress in the Two of Cups. Here we go. What is this? What is this? Re oh, shit. Yeah. 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 So. <sighs> Damn. Damn. Okay, you guys, this is definitely a, a, a situation in which, sure, we could have been dealing with the dynamic of the emperor and the empress in two external individuals. But it also feels like whomever here has come to this awareness, this heart chakra awareness, whomever is having this like higher awareness and, and like seeing clearly, seeing much clearer than you may have in the past, you definitely have a representation or you definitely have an, a, 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 a reality or a situation in which the masculine and the feminine have come into a certain level of alignment within you, okay? You have the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands, okay? The King of Wands, oh my goodness. Please excuse the sniffles, you guys. I'm so sorry. But, um, and I really don't want to stop, keep pausing because it's interrupting the flow of the reading. But originally, I thought the Emperor had come out, but it was in fact the Queen of Wands. So I was like, okay, good, that still makes sense. And then I saw the King of Wands at the bottom of the deck and I was like, wow, okay, that makes even more sense. Now keep in mind, we're clarifying the Empress and the Two of Cups here, right? This is what we're clarifying. Look at what's underneath the King of Wands, the Emperor. To the Hermit, 
to the Queen of Swords. <sighs> okay, so what this is saying here is yes, there is an element of a balance and harmonious union between the masculine and the feminine within you that has in fact come online. And that has created a greater sense of a greater sense of self-awareness that is allowing you to make some massive cuts, Queen of Swords. Now, what else has come out here? Well, you have the Queen of Wands, which is you being in a very confident, feeling very sexy, feeling very much in the in the receptive flow. Of things right but then you also have that with the three of cups the seven of swords and the queen and the ace of cups now what does this represent the three of cups and the seven of swords is representing some sort of hive mind mentality and I understand that if we're talking about love and relationships we're really only talking about a, 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 a relationship with another person excuse me with one other person however however Sure, there's one main person that you may have this relationship with, but there it but there's still some sort of hive mind mentality or there's still some sort of collective or group energy involved here. And it's not that there's any sort of like third party influence or anything like that. It's really just a matter of it feels more like a hive mind mentality, okay? Um, a lower vibrational collective mindset that you are breaking out of, that you are breaking free from, that you're finding is incredibly deceptive. I'm picking up on a friends group, people around you. And I'm not really getting anything specific in how this friend group or these people around you has affected this relationship. Because again, I don't really feel like there's any sort of like, there's any sort of actual interference from a bunch of people or like friends or anything it just really it just feels like a hive mind mentality or like i said a lower vibrational group mindset that you are breaking out of that this relationship that you were in was settled into but now you because of this higher awareness that's coming through because of this 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 heart chakra awareness that's coming through for you you have the ability to get into this really this really confident, really sure of yourself, really receptive Queen of Wands energy and to love yourself, Ace of Cups. Love yourself and to be confident enough to move forward in the direction that you see fit or to move forward in a, much, in a direction that is um, guided by, influenced by protecting yourself. Having a, ooh, I just heard having a greater sense of honor and dignity. And I, I don't I don't mean that to be an insult to anyone that's around you or anyone that you may have been associated with in the past. It just feels like you have a greater sense of honor and dignity within yourself to move forward in your path in a much more healthy way. OK. Ugh. OK, last thing that I want to look at before moving forward, I just want to look at this whole pile here. Five of Swords, Nine of Wands. Eight of Wands, all in reverse, coupled with the Knight of Wands, okay? I want to look at this. I don't even want to... I just want to, I just want to get whatever clarity or message I can from this part, yeah? So here we go. What do we have for you? What is this mess? What is this mess? <laughs> Shit, y'all. We're definitely talking about romance today. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Ace of Wands. And this is speaking to inspiration to move forward. You, It finally feels like you feel good, you feel safe, you feel happy about. Or maybe if you're not happy about it, you feel like it's in, it's in alignment with you at this point to... Set yourself free from this, okay? You, and the reason why I laughed when I was when I was pulling is because the very first card that came out to clarify this group of energy here, this Five of Swords, Nine of Wands, Eight of Wands, all in reverse with the Knight of Wands upright, is freaking justice, okay? So justice is being served here in this situation. Whatever it is you're walking away from, whatever it is you're no longer giving your time, attention, your attention or effort to, it's justified because that justification is coming from a place of you making the best decision for yourself. 
uh, a decision that is guided from higher guidance is what I, what I just heard, or uh, I'm sorry, a decision that is influenced by higher guidance. You have justice with the lovers. And yes, the lovers here is in fact confirming to me that we are talking about a romantic relationship for the most part, okay? It doesn't have to be, obviously this is a general reading, but I definitely feel the love vibes on this one. Um, <clears throat> but to be quite honest, what I'm also hearing is no love lost there. Yikes. Okay, that's fine. But also, what you have here, with coupled with this, you have the Page of Swords, now with the Queen of Swords again. So what this is saying to me is, with this Page of Swords energy, you've learned what it is that you needed to learn. You see what it is you needed to see. You understand what it is you needed to understand to say, okay, it's time to put an end to this now. And that's why it feels like moving forward in, wow, see, look at that. Moving forward in this way is in direct alignment. You have the Ace of Wands at the bottom of the deck with the Eight of Cups right underneath that. For some of you here, there is too much damn confusion. There is too much uncertainty. There's a good amount of gaslighting, potentially, or there's just smoke and mirrors. Nothing seems quite right. It just doesn't, it's like you can't really nail anything down. You can't get any, any definitive answers. It's just like, it's all smoke and mirrors. That's fine. It's time to move away from this. And the best way to deal with this, instead of just trying to like cut through it or blow all the smoke away, the best thing to do is just walk away from it altogether. Why? Because it's a lose-lose situation, five of swords. Okay? And as I saw that, as I said that, I just saw five, five, five on the counter. Mm-hmm. All right. Oracle Guidance. Let's go with the Divine Feminine Oracle today. Yes? Even though this situation is, um, does have elements to it that are, ow. You know, sorry, sidebar, but like I get these phantom pains in my toes and like my feet. It's like my body is constantly on edge thinking that I'm getting stung by fire ants or some shit because there are fire ants like crazy here. And so like I freak out. It's like, what, am I getting bit? Am I getting stung? No, it's just my body freaking out. <laughs> okay, even though this is, sorry, total sidebar, even though this situation is represented by the by by a balance between masculine and feminine energy here i definitely want to go with the divine feminine oracle i'm just feeling guided to pull from that so five shuffles one two have you guys ever been stung by fire ants and i say stung specifically this is two i mean normally you'll get bit by ants but fire ants actually have a stinger and that's shit Hurts. Oh my god. This is three. Who, kn who knew that something, that an organism so tiny could inflict such terrible pain? I mean, like, it's four. Like, I haven't, I ha I've been, I I've had the unfortunate experience a few months ago. I was helping one of my neighbors do some yard work. <laughs> And I made the mistake of kneeling down in the grass without my leg being covered because like I was I was washing stuff off. So I had pulled my pant leg up so that my pants didn't get wet. But I forgot to bring it back down before I knelt, knelt down into the grass and I got bit by a bunch, well stung by a bunch of fire ants. But I've never had the experience of like stepping on an ant hive and like being completely overtaken. I couldn't imagine how painful that must be because just getting one sting just one sting you guys is is some of the most terrible pain that i have ever experienced in my life now granted i don't know what it's like to to like to like be go in labor or to like you know have period cramps or anything like that like whoo, more power to you ladies i mean like i i feel for you i don't whoa but fire ants this is five
Oh, okay. <laughs> Closing message, please, Spirit. We have three. Wow. This is beautiful. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, you have Teresa of Avila, Our Lady of the Interior Life. I trust the answers I find within me. I know the presence of love is real. And that's, excuse me, that's what I feel like is being represented here by the Empress and the Two of Cups. While there may be an energy of like some, a little bit of anger or animosity or disdain as you're walking away from this current situation, it still feels like there is a level of awareness within you that's like, look, this ain't the end all be all. Like, I'm going to find love. That's not the issue. All I know is I'm walking away from this shit. Okay. Now you have three other cards here. You have Perpetua, the saint of authenticity. I am my authentic self in all circumstances. Beautiful. You have Yishi to Tsogyal. I hope I said that correctly, Tsyogo, uh, Lady of the Lotus Born. Embodiment is the deepest bliss. My body was made for enlightenment. And then we have Queen Esther, the Morning Star. My ego is in service of my soul, and I trust my soul's divine timing. Again, please, <laughs> please, please excuse the manicure. All right, let's see what we can get here. Now, is this in alphabetical order? I don't remember. Yes. All right. Uh, Perpetua. Oh, wait, no. Actually, let's go with... Yeah, Perpetua's first. Okay. Whoa, I turned right to it. That's cool. All right. Um... When, we're just going to read this part. When your soul selects her card, when we find the courage to be true to who we are, a vitality returns to us, a voice that's both moving and compelling simply because it's authentic. St. Perpetua's words in her very personal and emotional diary were so impactful that 200 years later, the renowned church father, Augustine, would write about their beauty and truth. St. Perpetua suggests that there is no greater power than choosing to remain our authentic self in all circumstances. She's that person who remained loyal to her soul, and she urges us through her example to embrace the power of being authentic now. Even in the face of death, she courageously held fast to her truth that she was Christian. Her right hand reveals the Christ mudra. She also reminds us that journaling that journal writing can be a sacred act of returning to ourselves, of listening to the soul voice within us, and of going inward to find our answers. Perpetua is a call to a journal writing practice, even if it's just to record our dreams each morning. The inner voice that greets us as we write strengthens our authenticity. That voice becomes a light, a fire that calls to us and claims us as we dare to live out its truth. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, next would be Queen Esther. Hold on. Oh. Okay. So, when your soul selects her card, the ego has a timetable that the soul couldn't care less about. When we are feeling stressed or threatened in some way, fear can be exceptionally loud and can inform the ego to work overtime in trying to get something accomplished or to manipulate something to happen. The natural flow of energy that's always at work behind the scenes, the universe's capacity to assist us, then gets blocked. When we are in service of love, we are following the dictates of our soul. The diktats of our soul. Dictates, diktats, whatever. And when the ego is in service of the soul, divine timing ensues. Esther mastered this art. Even under extreme duress, she listened wisely to her soul. She became a queen by letting her love for her people inform her feminine intuitive powers. 
This is her imper it is her imperative. Trust that everything is aligning in divine timing. Trust your soul voice. Excellent. And finally, we have Yeshe Tsogyo. I hope I'm saying that correctly. All right. Oh, that's weird. Oh, I see. It's not in new. It's not in alphabetical order in the book, but in the table of contents, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, when your soul selects her card, no matter what has happened recently or in the past, uh, ba. Wait, wait. Hold on. Nope, nope. This is the wrong one. Yes, that is the wrong one. Shoot. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Ah. Okay, there we go, here we go. Okay, so when your soul selects her card, it can be easy to forget that everything we touch, everything we say, and everything we do is not separate from the divine. Yeshe embodied one of the most potent spiritual truths. The female body is an asset to enlightenment, not a hindrance. The body is a vehicle to free us from the idea that we are any limited, that there are any limitations to reality. Tantra, which weaves together the sacred and the mundane to reveal the spiritual nature of all things, allowed Yeshe to realize that she was both an ordinary woman and an incarnation of the Buddha, Vajrayogini. Vajrayo, oh goodness, I'm butchering that. We are both human and divine. We are both mortal body and an eternal essence that continues on. The body too often can be the scapegoat for such for so much hate, distrust, and violence. The body holds infinite wisdom, pleasure, and possibilities. This is the moment to see your gorgeous body as the tremendous gift that it is. It's the moment to realize that there is no greater intoxication than just being fully in your body from head to soul. Yeshe is the call to remember the, ho the holiness of your flesh, the deep wisdom of your body, the deep wisdom your body contains, and the temple you walk around in every day. Beautiful. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Happy hump day. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>